Whoa, this is the illusion reporting from somewhere on Spaceship Earth. All right, this is my third attempt at reviewing The Heart of Everything That Is by Bob Dury and Tom Clavin. This is the untold story of Red Cloud. Every time I've made one of these videos, I've just gone straight on a rant because it's such a radical subject matter. First off, I'm gonna try to stick to like a book review format. Excellent piece of literature. It's fully uh, indexed. Everything is noted and cited, but it flows like a novel. Red Cloud, phew, look at this guy, bad ass. This guy kicked ass and beat the United States Cavalry on the high plains. Yep. This guy. All right, before I go off on the rant, because it gets me on a rant every time. As far as the book goes, it's got pictures. Red Cloud died. Nice old age, because he didn't surrender. And uh, it's got some good pictures. Good pictures of some of us. Uh, Red Cloud's bros who uh, helped kick ass on the white man. Oh yeah, this guy, this guy. Look at that arrogant punk. He didn't pull it off. Just so you know. Neither did this guy. This this asshole didn't pull it off either. All right, so um. Oh, and my one complaint is there's just not enough maps in here. I'm, t you know, my one thing is if you're going to put a historical novel out and it involves any sort of landscape issues and people moving around on the landscape, you need more maps, people. You can't have enough maps. I kept, I kept coming up short on the map department. Anyway, that's my only real complaint about this novel. <sighs> Where do I begin? How do I not go into a rant? All right, this guy, Red Cloud, he was a Sioux warrior, and the, uh, the Plains Indians were pretty ruthless warriors. You came up against them, and you lived, bad things were going to happen to you, and if you died, bad things were going to happen to your carcass. They had a, they had a thing about dismemberment. Let me just say that. They weren't exactly uh, civilized, but who's civilized in war, right? I mean, uh, war is the most uncivilized concept ever. So for us to pretend there's any sort of civilized aspect to war, I think, is maybe what these guys were about, really. It's like, look, we're going to war, so uh, what's a little bit of dismemberment here and there? It's just part of the deal. But uh, the interesting thing was Red Cloud and the Sioux and the Cheyenne and a lot of the Plains Indians kept making treaties with the United States government. And the United States government kept screwing them over and pushing them further and further back. And these guys basically just wanted to be left alone. I mean, that, that's what it all comes down to. They really wanted to be left alone, especially Red Cloud and his, and his people up in the Powder River area of Wyoming. They viewed the uh, Black Hills, South Dakota, as sacred. And the United States government promised them that whole area of Wyoming, South Dakota, North Dakota, to be their land. And uh, everybody kept taking it from them because it was a pretty nice Garden of Eden type land. And uh, when they came, they basically shit on it. And these dudes were none too happy with how the white man was treating the land once they got there because they lived in harmony with the land. They were one with the land. They weren't afraid of the land. They didn't need to erect walls and structures and kill every animal around them and destroy the land. They were at one with the land and they knew how to move about the land. They didn't need to extract from the land every bit of resources at the cost of the land. 
You know, I think if we look in, uh, if we look at the state of our land here on Spaceship Earth, we've done a great disservice to Mother Earth and ultimately to ourselves as a species because our abuse of the land, it's going to bite us in the ass in the end. You can't drink dirty water. You can't drink polluted water. You can't grow crops on, on polluted soil. But, you know, anyway, these guys knew what was coming. I mean, I don't know if they knew exactly what was coming, but they got a glimpse, man. The Oregon Trail was coming through, and they were putting the Bozeman Trail, and these guys weren't having any of it, man. These guys were just like, You're, you white men are gross. So... Where does that take? Why do I why do I keep going on the rant making these videos? Because this guy, no different than George Washington in a weird way, he was fighting the same nonsense that George Washington was fighting. The military industrial complex. Dude, Red Cloud was a sovereign being, just as George Washington was a sovereign being. Basically, basically, this book. Tells us where we've been, where we are, and where we're going. Look, we all need to be Red Cloud. Dude, America's been conquered by the America, the in military-industrial complex. Dude, if you haven't picked that up, that you don't live in the America of your grandparents, you're not paying attention, dude. We live in a, a fascist police state. Oh, fascism, what is the merger of state and corporate? That's what fascism is. The corporations run this country. The corporations have taken over the political structure. The corporations have basically abolished the Constitution and Bill of Rights. We need to take a lesson from Red Cloud because what Red Cloud was fighting, the military industrial complex around the time of the Civil War and after the Civil War, is the same people we need to be fighting. The same evil doers. Because what they did, all right. When, when certain tribe bands, if you will, bands would, would say, all right, you know what, I'm not going to fight the United States government and the cavalry, so we're going to uh, we're gonna be peaceful and we're going to come live next to the forts and we're going to live on the piece of land you've given us. We're going to change our ways. And they would go and they would move to this piece of land. And guess what? They inevitably we're, were the ones that got massacred. Yeah, that's usually what happened. The ones who were trying to be peaceful to the white man were massacred. And why? Because the United States government viewed them as basically expendable. They had talk, and there's straight quotes from Congress viewing the, the solution to the Indian problem was extermination. Our government was basically talking about genocide of a people. No different than Adolf Hitler, no different than Joseph Stalin. The United States government participated in genocide. Now look, I'm not going to sit here and talk about Indian affairs, man. That, that I would do them a disservice. All I know is we need to maybe look to the Indians or the original people left and maybe bring them forward to look to them for maybe where we've gone wrong and what we could do right and possibly figure out this problem we've been in because what we're doing around the world is what we did to the Plains Indians and basically any Indian tribe in North America at the time, but we're sticking to the Plains Indian because that's what this book was about. Now, the funny thing is, is because Red Cloud and his fellow badass warriors didn't surrender and didn't capitulate to the ways of the American, and mis American military industrial complex, they got to live and die at a ripe old age. Although, although Crazy Horse, he did get killed. A lot of mystery around that. Anyway. Not going to go into Crazy Horse right now, but Crazy Horse was rolling with Red Cloud. That's for sure. But uh, it's funny. The ones who did try to come in peaceably got slaughtered by the United States government. Oh, and what happened when the, to the survivors of the ones the United States government slaughtered? The peaceful Plains Indians. They turned militant. 
No different than I'm sure what's going on in the Middle East right now, and Africa, and Asia, and, you know, these places that we figure, let's just kill a bunch of civilians. They're collateral damage. They're expendables. You know what? Their relatives and their next of kin are pretty bitter about it. So we've basically, like, if you look at Iraq, I know some Iraqis. I know some Iraqis who lived there before the nightmare we inflicted upon them. And I don't know why I'm drifting over to Iraq, but to say that we've killed, what, one million, two million in innocent people in Iraq? What, you think they're cool about that? You think, you think the... The innocent people in Iraq are like, you know what? We're just collateral damage. It's cool. You know what, man? They had some big lofty ideals. They were just trying to, uh, they were just trying to liberate us and give us democracy and freedom. They only like blew apart my whole country and, and killed my family members. But you know what? I understand them, man. So, you know, let's let bygones be guy bygones. No, 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 no. Do we basically have provoked the world. And you know what, man? People are going to go, oh, oh, if you don't like it, leave it. You know what, man? If you have that attitude, you've already left it, baby. Because this ain't about America. This is about humanity. And that's what Red Cloud represents, man. When you read this book, he is what it's about. Someone who stood up for his family, his friends, his tribe, his community, and basically said, screw you and your negative trip, man. And they basically slaughtered a bunch of United States cavalry dudes. And they had it coming, man. Oh, and this, this isn't the dude who did Custard in. No. Custard comes later. Yes, Custer comes later. But these guys, Red Cloud and his people, they uh, kicked our ass, man. And uh, they did not surrender. That's the epic part about it. They did not surrender. Though they didn't really win in the long run. I don't know if you could ask any of his descendants up in South Dakota if they really won in the long run. But, you know, they are still on Spaceship Earth. So... Red Cloud's bloodline is coursing through the veins of this planet. And that's a good thing, I think. Because I identify more with him than Hillary Clinton or Jeb Bush or Rand Paul or any of the monkeys in the suits in the White House. I'm all about this guy, Red Cloud. This guy is a true, true Sovereign being. Ooh, sovereign, dude. Yeah. Ah, America, dude. There is no America left, people. Read this book. The Heart of Everything That That Is. It's a fascinating book. It's an awesome historical read. It's an excellent read. Just If you wanted to just pretend it's fiction and just read a novel, it, it, it reads like that, too. Though it's nonfiction, because it did happen. And it's uh, totally, uh, totally cited. Everything's cited, so uh, you can't dispute it. Anyway, this is the illusion. I think I made it through this book review without losing my mind. And just out of, so, you're, so you can have some fun, those of you who want, I want to put my other two attempts at reviewing this book down below. And uh, you can see for yourself. But I kind of lost my mind each time I've sort of simmered down a little bit. But uh, hey, let's keep the frequency high. Red Cloud.